Uh, before we go any further, let's find out a little bit about our audience that's joining us today. We're going to have a short poll that will appear on your screen here in just a moment. There's a lot of people in the audience to launch this to. It's taken a second. Okay, so what is your level of expertise in live streaming? Just go ahead and select one of the following there. Once we get good participation in on that, we'll move forward. Great. Okay, sharing those results so our panelists can see. Looks like we've got um, a pretty even split between no experience at all and novice. Uh, with just a few experience. So, you know, that's definitely what we thought going into this. That's why we're doing this webinar, the tips and tricks. The people just want to know how to get started, where to begin. There's so much information when you Google live streaming available right now. It's good to point us in the right direction. Um, let me see. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick introduction about uh, that this session is part of an informative series being presented by APAC, which is the Alliance of Performing Arts Conferences. This leadership group of regional, national, and international performing arts conferences meets annually to discuss industry trends, identify common advocacy issues, and address areas for improvement in the field. Members include Arts Midwest, Arts Northwest, Arts Ready, APAP, the Association of Performing Arts Professionals, Folk Alliance International, the North American Performing Arts Managers and Agents, North Carolina Presenters Consortium, IPAY, South Arts, and the Western Arts Alliance. Okay, so i take a moment to just introduce uh, the people we've got here with us, our esteemed panelists, Stephen Kellogg, Lee Totten, Corey Martin of Shadowscape Records, Samantha Potter, and Graham Lindsay. Um, we have been gathering questions for this tech webinar for at least three weeks now. Uh, through the hundreds and hundreds of questions, we, we pulled them all together and tried to get this, this common agenda up. Um, so basically we've got uh, first things first connecting to the internet uh, content creation we're going to cover a little bit about platforms and of course gear um, and then at the end we'll be doing a live q a uh, so save your questions till that time let's go ahead and get started with first things first we're going to go to graham Lindsay. thanks so much jared all right, so in terms of the uh, the ideal setup, at least my personal ideal setup for web streaming, I use I use a laptop or a desktop computer. They have a webcam built in. Usually the web webcam is fairly good. Sometimes on some laptops you have webcams that aren't quite as uh, as good, so you can just buy an extra external webcam and clips onto the top of the screen or or whatever, um, and that'll be a good setting, uh, good good base setup for you. Um, I don't like to use wireless devices because it, it re requires you to to go through a wireless router or something like that. And in, in terms of in terms of the ability, I think of wireless as as a sort of a pipe that you can go through that's about like this. If you're, uh, I've got a friend who lives in an old schoolhouse, and essentially it's uh, 18 inch uh, 18 inch walls and they're stone. So your pipe effectively is like that. If you're on the same network with uh, with other people, your pipe is down to that because you're, everyone's trying to upload and download things together. If you can get it through an ethernet cable, which uh, if you have a laptop which, that doesn't have an ethernet port on the side, then you can just uh, you can get an adapter, so you can plug in through USB. Or if you've got a, a desktop computer or a monitor or something like that that does have ethernet on it, then you've got access to not, not this type of uh, pipe that you're going out through Wi-Fi, but it's a pipe like this. If you can beat every, all the other data going to your router, you get out to the internet. And basically, once you get to the internet, it's more or less uh, beyond your control what happens to your data. Um, it just goes straight from, from from your place to, not straight, but you know, it goes through a whole bunch of relays to the social media service that you're streaming to. Um, for software, I use one of two things. If I'm streaming through Facebook, uh, they've got a really great web interface where you can use cameras and any audio interface that you've got connected to your computer. I have a couple of uh, microphones. Uh, today I'm only talking to you through the, the, the microphone on my screen because GoToMeeting uh, didn't allow any more. Uh, uh, but usually I, I use a great audio interface, really good microphones, so my audio isn't just webcam audio. Um, a piece of software called OBS allows uh, allows you to, to 
get a little bit more fancy and stream to YouTube, uh, and that that just gives you more uh, more capability, more more flexibility. Um, in terms of in terms of uh, the actual streaming uh, quality, there are two things. One one's called buffering, and one's called drop connection. And you you've probably heard of both. Buffering is when your audio stops and then starts again, and then and it's so frustrating. If you if you've got that, it's often because either your there some, somewhere there's a bottleneck. If your if, if the pipe that you're going through is too small, it could be on your end. If it's a Saturday night or even a Friday night or something like that, it could just be Facebook that's completely tapped out. Um, so so just get the best that you can and uh, and you'll be uh, you'll be just it, it, this is actually the wild west. So do the best you can and people are gen generally forgiving. Um, if you can have a buddy who can do the backup. Uh, so so I, I know we're all we're all isolated, but if you can have somebody in your house in your wherever you're streaming from so that they can hit the the go button and you can be sitting on camera to start with, that's a perfect setup because then you don't have to be the guy going and, you know and then start start the, the webcam. Um, also on things like Facebook, there's a test setting. So you can actually start a test broadcast if you're broadcasting, if you're Stripe streaming to a page. So test, test, test. That's the, like, make sure that the first time you're hitting go live isn't the first time that you're trying to, to stream your concert or your, your, what, your event. Um, and then for resolution, I always look at the number of the, the, the data that you can uh, spit out of your computer per pixel. So any one of us can stream, and I don't mean just the panelists, I mean any, any person can stream the biggest image that you can possibly stream. If you're going through a pipe like that, it's gonna be blurry because it's gonna be all uh, compressed. So scale it down a little bit, and if you can have a better, more crisp picture, people will be able to enlarge it so that it fills their screen, and then that uh, that that'll give them a better uh, uh, better outcome. Um, so, and then in terms of security, there's something called a streaming key, and it it connects the streaming platform to the software encoder, so OBS or whatever you're using to actually take the thing that's on your computer, the video and the audio, and send it to the streaming service. Don't ever let anyone see your streaming key, because if anyone out there sees my streaming key, you enter that into your, your broadcaster, and it appears on my social media feed. And that's a very big security issue. Uh, another security thing is just not letting people see you uh, when uh, when your you know when, when your computer is is turned on. I and and you know your your camera might be on. I use little black pieces of sticky note to do this because I can be absolutely 100% certain that nobody can see me if there is no green light on there and there's a sticky note covering it. Otherwise, who knows? And I'm doing a lot more web streaming now. Um, yeah. Really quickly to wrap up. Uh, there, there's also, uh, I'm sure a lot of people have used Zoom or at least heard of it. Um, there's something called a meeting ID and a password. They used to not require a password. And then you had a whole bunch of people. Unfortunately, there were, there were, there were attacks where there was uh, mature content shown, um, advertisements, and it just got really messy. So Zoom requires now every meeting to have a meeting ID and a password, but they also send you a link. So I can send it to anybody and with one click, they're in. Two things. The waiting room is a great way to avoid people getting directly into your meeting. So you have to approve everybody who, who comes in. And, um, and and I guess just don't post it on social media. Uh, right. Don't post it anywhere somewhere, someone could, could grab that. Amazing, thank you so much, Graham. So just to kind of recap some of those tricks, uh, do you definitely want a wired connection? Forget Wi-Fi, the pipe is just too small. You'll never fit all the data through it and you'll run into all kinds of issues. So get an adapter if you need an adapter, but get that wired connection to your router. Um, sounds like also uh, a great idea is to, you know, keep all of those security things secret, keep the password secret, keep your stream key secret. You know, don't ever give anyone the presentation um, if, you know, if somebody's trying to hack into your, to your Facebook thing, keep all those links links separate. Uh, are there any other tips that I missed there that you really feel like uh, are key to? Yeah, I, actually, uh, so so when, when I'm recording as a backup, if there is uh, the, the, the buffering or the, the streaming mm -hmm. uh, delay, uh, if there's a dropout, I let's say hypothetically, I pretend this is a computer but, or, or the phone that I'm trying to stream through. If I've got this up here, have another phone up as well. And then you can record a clean version of yourself so yeah. that uh, so, so you're not relying on buffering. And worst case scenario, just laugh at, laugh about it later on and say, hmm, Saturday night, Facebook, what do you know? And then you can upload a clean version of it, bet, probably better audio, better video for sure, no yeah. dropouts. Just make sure you've got enough space on your phone. 
I love it. So yeah, time is also a big deal. When you're making these streams, it matters if a lot of people around you are doing the same. Thank you so much, Graham. Um, sure. In the interest of time, we wanna keep moving. We're gonna talk a little bit about content creation, audio and video. Uh, I, we all know that you know, quality audio is absolutely paramount when it comes to a live stream um, and even more important when music is your primary content. Uh, I'd like to invite Samantha to give us some of her tips for making uh, great live streams that sound their best. Hey, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm glad to virtually meet everybody. Uh, so this has been a huge topic lately because you know a, a lot, big portion of my work ends up being church work, and and everybody's sort of flying over into streaming land very suddenly. And so it's been a it's been a month. <laughs> it's been a month of work. So let's talk a little bit about you know why audio is so important and and you know why we need to focus on it got a couple slides here for you i also have my email and if you guys want to follow me on the social media or reach out to me with questions i'm i'm here to answer them so audio is uh oh yeah you can leave it on there for a second thanks Jen. uh so audio is what people kind of assume is going to work flawlessly but the second that there's a problem like it's people are want to leave people are very forgiving of, of video issues it's like ah, it's it's buffering it's fine but when audio either sounds bad or it's unintelligible like i mean i i certainly don't stay for long uh you know i try to be forgiving but that happens so it's really important that we make sure we try to get as much of a handle on it as possible if we go on to the next slide we've got some common questions that i want to make sure we answer you know does the internet make my audio sound like crap you know what determines audio quality and, and how do i achieve the best sound in my home and to give some quick answers uh yes the internet is in fact going to make your audio sound like crap uh the only way around this is if you uh, just like upload like a video and that's not genuinely streaming uh it's uploading the video but it will sound great uh there are certain ways and somebody may talk about it later but you can you know live stream where you record yourself live and then you uh, time the video to get pushed out uh, it's obviously much less interactive that way but you would have fantastic video quality and a lot better audio quality you know okay so what determines the audio quality um pretty much just your, your streaming bit rate and without diving too much into all of that um, 128 kilobits per second is is a cd so if you put a cd on that's that's that quality uh, if you manage to get that during your entire stream, uh, I, I'd be very surprised. Uh, we're all hopeful of it, but it just doesn't doesn't happen a lot. Facebook is probably running it at 96 kilobits, and YouTube is is better. I think YouTube is better um, prepared for the onslaught of streaming people, uh, and they'll handle 128 a lot a lot better. But uh, in OBS and other software encoders, you can go into the settings and find your audio encoding and, and make sure you're selecting, you know, 128, or if you really want to go for it and you have a huge internet bandwidth, you could do 192, but just know the more, more information you're pushing out, <laughs> the harder everything's going to have to work. So, and then I think kind of maybe something that we can actually control <laughs> is how do I achieve the best sound in, in my home? And really it's getting us, if anybody has any recording uh, experience, it's, very similar to this you want as much isolation as possible proper mic placement and choice uh you know before i had to switch over i had my my little mxl uh v67g mic and i have i keep it close to me uh so i can have my gain down so i'm not getting so much room reverberance and i also have a very large rug uh i have hardwood floors and that is uh not fun to hear <laughs> when you're recording something so I really try to almost kind of deaden the room as much as possible. Uh, I've seen people do stuff uh, closet adjacent because the clothes pick up a lot of that extra energy. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, if you, anybody has any recording experience, it's going to feel a lot like that. Don't be afraid to get up on that microphone uh, in order to try to reject as much room as possible. So we can go to the next slide. Uh, Common pitfalls, okay, we are, you know, Graham already hit this. Uh, using Wi-Fi, <laughs> instead of just plugging into the internet directly, that's gonna cause a lot of problems. Uh, using the an incorrect amount of mics, so either using like way too many mics or just using one microphone to try to get like three people, uh, it's not good. The signal to noise ratio is going to be uh, very low. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of room, a lot of extra stuff that we don't want. 
Uh, platform errors are huge. Those are totally out of our control. If Facebook wants to blow up, it's going to blow up. I, it's happening a lot lately <laughs> and we can't do anything, which is exactly, hey, look what Graham said, record yourself separately. So you've got at least this preservation of your performance. Even if the platform dies, you at least have a recording you can upload later. Uh, and then distortion. You've probably heard some people, um, their mics are too hot and it's actually clipping the electronics in their chain and it starts to sound, you know, gross and robotic and not great at all. It also happens a lot if something is like way over compressed uh, and I'm not even going to get into luffs and things like that, but uh, just making sure you've got healthy signal sending into your computer before it shoots off into the internet. And then just mixing in general, don't just like set up a bunch of mics and pay no mind to how loud anybody is. You know, you want to, you know, perform as you might normally. If you have no amplification and it's just like an acoustic set, you're very aware of, of how loud you are compared to other people. And that needs to remain true, if, especially if you're all recording in one space. So, uh, and then I think I've got, yeah, I think we'll do Q&A and stuff later, so. Uh, so yeah, if we wanna talk about troubleshooting at any point, but you know, we're happy to move over into video world. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we've got plenty of that coming up. We're going to be digging deep into it when we get to the gear section for sure. Um, thank you so much, Sam, uh, Samantha. Really appreciate it. Uh, let's move along to uh, kind of our the sister to audio uh, video content. Stephen Kellogg, would you like to share us some of your best practices for video content? Sure, sure. You know, and I can. Uh, uh, you've got so many people who have such a deep understanding of tech here on this panel that uh, I think the most useful thing that I'm going to be able to offer you today is going to be um, talking about the actual shows and the content you're putting together. Um, if you're anything like me, you know, when this started 47 days ago, I'm a guy who writes his songs in notebooks. I record my albums live. You know, this is a very uncomfortable world to be living in right now. The amount of tech had me in the fetal position for at least the first two weeks. So um, I, having said that though, you know, here's where we are. And uh, that's probably why you're tuned in today. Um, there is a baseline of tech stuff that has to be figured out and has to be sorted. But I would probably be of the mindset that no, your your video camera doesn't matter much, uh, and and very little actually matters. I mean, you have to be able to get at everything that everyone's saying. I I agree with the better the audio. I mean, that's really disruptive to your ability to communicate. But I think the thing that we've been able to do um, that is that I've realized about all this is that. You know, you still it's still so much about what you're doing, what you're putting out there. Um, I think of the first the first thing we did when this all started was a Facebook Live. Uh, and I read a, a chapter from my new book and I listened back and the audio was awful. And I thought, how can anybody get this? But what was amazing was the feedback we were getting from people their sense of what was even being put out, even when it looked blurry, even when it was choppy even when something went wrong the, the, what you're actually doing um, what you're actually putting into your shows is so important and that's where I feel like um, you know I can I have something to offer in that sense you know I think it's very very important to to think when you when you sit down to do a stream to what's what's your goal who are you trying to reach what do you I mean People are counting on artists in ways that they haven't. There's folks sheltering in place who just need this show. So regardless of how it looks, if you're too dark or if something is going to go wrong, I mean, try with all that. But never forget that what you're putting into that that little laptop camera, you know, what you're saying, your, the words you're expressing, the music you're playing, like you, it's 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 a big deal. It's like sitting there with someone who's taken the time to tune into your situation because they need what you distinctly have to offer. And I've been taking that really really seriously. You know, if you if you if you've ever seen me play, you you may have seen me berate audiences for being noisy while I'm playing. I'm, I'm I hate that. You know. And now here we are, zero to sixty on the complete other side of the spectrum where there's nothing going on at all while I'm playing. 
And that is as jarring as having an audience talk while you're playing. So for the first couple nights, we've done our whole tour. I had a book tour planned and with help from Lee, who you're going to hear from, we've been able to get it up and running and do it as a ticketed thing. And I view every night as a show and I, I change the show around and I, I get in there and those first couple shows, it's weird because you don't hear the applause and you don't hear the, the laughter where you, you know, you had an anecdote that you thought people would love or something like that. But it's also, you know, this is where we're at. So taking yourself um, seriously enough, I thought Graham's advice to laugh it off when it goes wrong is sage advice and something we need to remember. Nobody's going to get hurt if our stream doesn't go right. But, but, but believe that they're going to laugh. Believe that they're going to applaud. Give them the moment to do that. Feel it. And then move on to your next song. And so I view this as this huge opportunity that we're having um each day you know to uh, to reach people and yes the tech stuff is daunting but you know figure it out to the best of your ability i wouldn't get you know i've got a couple of light bulbs hanging around us and we've managed to make them work i called my friends who are lds i said where should i put one they said put one behind your head i said i can't they said okay put one in front of your head i mean it's just we're just winging it you know we all are and nobody's going to you know remember that they're going to remember what your vibe was and what you put out there. So, um, and pre-recorded versus live, you know, I, I like to go live cause I love, that's, that's just how I roll, but there's no judgment. I think any good content you can put in the world, um, right now is worth, is worth going ahead and, and putting it out there. Um, so, you know, I mean, that's most of what I, what I wanted to say to folks is keep setting the bar really high you know, and thinking of how can I make a difference in people's lives, put what you put into your show into these streams, you know, uh, and, and, uh, and if there's people watching, you, you really have an opportunity to, 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 you know, mean something. And that's, that's a, that's a great thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. In incredible advice for all the performers. I know we've got lots of them listening right now. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're, we can talk a little bit more about, video tech when we get into the gear section uh, i know i kind of sold that section out i feel bad i i there there i mean you know i'm like it doesn't really matter but also lee had helped me figure out what to do so he'll he'll, it, he'll get he'll make it up on his end see you you bring up a great point if you are not the expert in this and you google it and realize that there are a hundred thousand pages and you don't understand half the lingo call a friend you know someone who knows this stuff this is the time to tap into those relationships. You're absolutely right. And if you don't put the bulb behind your head, put it in front of your head. I love it. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, talk a little bit about live streaming platforms. We had tons of questions about this, uh, but there is there's an incredible wealth of information. And we actually have handouts with links from all of these panelists on some of the great services that are out there. I think, you know, first, we know the best place to stream is where your fans already are right? Like that should be your first one every time. But let's just say for the sake of this webinar that all things are equal. Uh, what would be your recommendation for a live streaming platform or, or even possibly a simulcast platform and why? Uh, lightning round in one minute, we're going to go to Lee first. Lee, are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah. Um, I always like to start with, well, you know, what is your goal? Uh, if your goal is to reach as many people as possible, figure out where your fans are. If that's Twitch, if that's Facebook, if it's YouTube, go there. Uh, if your goal is to monetize the performance, then you probably want to look at a platform like a Stage It, uh, where you can go and people can do tips uh, and you can do a ticketed event there. Uh, and if you're looking for something that's going to drive your mailing list, or if you have a fan club, you want to grow that, um, then you can do something like a live stream or YouTube unlisted and embed that inside of your existing fan club and platform and tell people to go there and sign up in order to see that. So for me, it really depends on what your goal is. That's great. Thank you, Lee. I hope everybody's taking notes on this stuff, but if you're not, don't worry. These are all linked down below. Uh, let's kick it over to Corey Martin. Yeah, I think I think we hit it on the head. I, I think it, one, it just does depend on where people are because if there's nobody who's used to seeing you in that place, you're just gonna be playing to yourself. Um, 
But for what it's worth, one of the things that Facebook did within the past couple of weeks was allow people to actually start tipping artists and gamers and stuff through their platform. And I think most people um, from a broad range are on Facebook. So I think the fact that Facebook has a pretty stable platform, people are used to using it, and like the ability to not only uh, do the stream, get tips, and then actually post it to your page. I think that's a pretty easy way to do it. Also though, if you're looking to grow and you can talk somebody into it, I think doing it on Instagram and, and seeing if you can share with a bigger artist than you and actually have them like come and kind of MC or like host your show um, via Instagram. Everything about Instagram sounds and looks terrible but it really doesn't matter if people are actually finding you for the first time and gonna go like check you out on Spotify and give you a little bit more of a chance than Instagram's gonna give you. But I think those are two ways that like, if you wanna go somewhere and maybe make some money on something that's normal, and if you just wanna have the ability to maybe reach new people, I think those are two platforms I'd use. That's great, thank you. Um, Steven, what do you think? Best platform for you? Yeah, I think it just depends. If you if you want to be casual, if you're just looking to jump in and say, hey, folks, I'm hanging out and want to play something, I really like Instagram Live. I think it's just handy and people can jump in and out and it's not a big deal. And so I'm a fan of that. It, you know, But I also have always felt that folk musicians in particular, you know, we, we sometimes fall into the myth of the starving artist and we think, oh, geez, you know, it, it, I think if you're going to put together a show and moving forward, you want to think about one of the more substantial platforms that's really going to allow you to, I mean, tip jars are great, but also, you know, you can do ticketed events and it's okay to, I mean, you can provide a really service and we've all got families to take care of too. So it's kind of, I, I encourage people often to go ahead and, and use platforms that will allow you to, to make it your living at it, you know, and it's like stage it and YouTube and such. So that's great. Um, Samantha Potter. What do you think about when you think platform? I, you know, immediately think of uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Instagram Live. I know that uh, my uh, people in their 20s um, are on Instagram Live a lot. And Instagram is one of those uh, very unproblematic, as far as like politically or anything, platforms where people just endlessly scroll forever and they get notifications that you're live and it's just this kind of like sweet little escape that's not Facebook. <laughs> but Facebook is great. It's just, you know, uh, depending on, I think the age group of or your, of the people who are listening to your music is a, is a huge point to remember, so. Thank you so much. Uh, Graham. Um, about a month ago, I, I did the broadcast for the Canadian Folk Music Awards and, uh, and you were asking about the simulcasting. And what I did was I had two laptops both hardwired in. One was broadcasting a pre-recorded. It was it was a live show, but it was a half-hour pre-recorded broadcast. So I I had two different shows. One with a 15-minute pre-roll with some some lead-in video that was broadcast on the website, and I did that through YouTube. But we could embed the YouTube uh, link in the in the Folk Awards website. Uh, then I I had the other one going to Facebook, but it only had because I figured you know people will will lose attention. It only had about a five-minute pre-show. Um, and so, so I had both going using OBS, crossing my fingers that everything would go well, because as Samantha said earlier, you know, it could, it could just go wrong based on Facebook blowing up, um, which for me happened the night before. For, so fortunately we were okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so in terms of, in terms of, um, I can speak to it being possible to simulcast, but it, it's, uh, it's not easy. Uh, at least I haven't found a way to do it on one computer going to two different services. Amazing. So Thank you. Like, sorry, if you use something like Restream or Stream Monkey, it'll cost a, a couple bucks, but there, there is, uh, you know, simulcasting providers out there. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you all so much. I appreciate the lightning round, the quick thoughts. I know everyone's furiously taking notes, trying to get this stuff down. But just a reminder that we do have resources in the handout section um, with all kinds of great guides provided by these panelists, how-tos. Basically, these are where they go for resources. This is where they go to learn more. Um, about the gear that they're that they're possibly buying, that they're that they possibly own. Um, speaking of gear, let's dive right in. Um, we've got a lot of questions about gear, guys. I mean, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of hundreds. Uh, I think a lot of this stuff you just got to Google it and read the reviews. But um, I mean, there's so much content that each of us here could probably have our own podcast that just doing gear reviews on live streaming. But uh, in the interest of a timely and direct content, we've asked Corey and Lee to give us some of their best picks. Corey, I'm going to let you take it away with starting from scratch. 
Cool. So let's just remember one thing, and, and Stephen hit this, contact is everything. If you have an older crowd who's not very tech savvy and you look like okay and sound okay, that's probably going to be all right. But a lot of people are going to have higher and higher expectations of you as they have nothing else to do but criticize you and watch you for endless hours. So one of the things that I want to, like this is a low entry point for me. A lot of people say, well, I don't have lights. I don't have a nice camera, I don't have a microphone. And I do not think that's an excuse at all whatsoever because I think for like $150, which some for some of us, that's a lot of money. I, dude, I remember eating peanut butter and jelly and like sleeping in the van and going town to town. But the truth is, is you probably have a pedal you don't use or a pair of pants you don't use or something in your house. Like eBay is a real thing that you can use and you can take some of your crap. You can take, you can find $150 worth of crap in your house. You can go sell that and you can put it into the three main barriers that are gonna keep you from having an okay live stream. So like what I think those barriers are is lighting a microphone and a camera. So I'm gonna start with like the base. Like the, most of us have this. We have an iPhone, we have a Samsung, we have something. Most of us care about our phones. So we usually have somewhat of a nice one. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like resources within just using your phone that cuts down a lot of barriers. Obviously you need a tripod, you need a phone, but some things like uh, the, the Rode VideoMic ME, which plugs directly into your iPhone and gives you like superior audio compared to what your iPhone can give you also like road makes a lot of good stuff but for like those road mics are about 59 to 60 dollars something like that uh techstar makes a sgc 598 it's 20 bucks if you have the right cable that goes into your iphone like a lightning cable it'll go right into there it's 20 dollars on amazon um so like like literally if you have an iphone and a microphone and a tripod you can you can do a pretty decent setup now you do need to think of things like Proximity, like that microphone is a shotgun microphone, most of these anyway. And the, or if you're just using the internal microphone in your iPhone, you're gonna have to think about your proximity. And they spoke to this a little bit, but you want it to sound good. So, so those are some things to think about. But also um, within that, like there's a, I think. Um, who was it? I wrote it down. X1 makes a thing called the Pro Rig, and it's actually a mounted system that takes your iPhone, you put it in there, you can also put a light on there and a shotgun microphone all in this like $100 rig, and it allows you basically have like a little video setup that you just go chunk right in front of you. You can you can run that right to your stream, you can stream right from your phone. And for like 100 to $150, there's, a, there's so many choices to get decent lighting. Aperture makes tons and tons of lights that are like 50 bucks to 60 bucks that have like dialable like Kelvin temperature so you can actually tune like you can tune the temperature of the white balance so there's a lot of extremely cheap but extremely good features and good products out there that if you literally just google you can find them uh we'll attach a bunch of things i know i've attached a lot of things at vocal line so hopefully we can send those links out but sincerely, like that's a really good starting place. Like there's no reason, in my opinion, if you've got like a MacBook Pro like me, I don't understand how the webcams are as bad as they are, but they're not great. They're just not great. I spent like four grand on the laptop and I look like the worst I've ever looked in that camera. But the iPhone, for whatever reason, especially if you have like the 11 Max, like it's a it's a nice like front facing camera. So I would just recommend at least telling yourself, I can find crap in my house or I can find 200 bucks, get yourself a light, get yourself a shotgun microphone at least, and, and get yourself something like a tripod, something to put this on there so your friend's not holding it the whole time. Those are really low entry points. There's no excuse to not do it because we can. And if we really do care about our career, if we're really trying to do this for real, 150, 200 bucks of an investment is not that bad. Now, if you wanna level up a, just a little bit above that, I would recommend like a Canon M50. It's gonna have a clean HDMI feed. It's gonna allow you to have like limitless recording and the really nice thing that's a, like that, that maybe the iphone doesn't do as well if you are willing to step into a entry level camera like a canon m50 or like a sony a5 100 they'll allow you for about 500 bucks to not only have something that live streams super super well um into a video capture device that you can live stream from like i am i'm I'm running a GH5, a Lumix GH5 into an A10 Mini right now. So that allows me to have like a couple different angles, allows me to have a little crisper image. But if you can level up to those, not only does it give you a great ability to live stream, but one of my favorite things is that actually you can take that camera and do other things. 
It's not just something that you have to buy for live stream. It's not something you just use in this way. You can, like like Samantha was saying, you can go, you can go create all kinds of content and you can create better content that you can simulate live later or that you can just put out to your fans just so you can keep having all kinds of variety, which the DSLR will afford you as well. So this, some of the things I just want to hit super, super fast is like that's some of the gear. There's, there's a lot of content out there that you can look up online, but just a few things that I would say like a lot of people are in bands and they're not around their bands and there's just not a ton of ways to like to get on zoom and play a show for people or, or something of that nature so i would say like my recommendation is just not even try but like maybe if everybody has a phone you guys can actually play songs to a click somebody in your band can like can edit those together line those up and you can through obs and through other other um platforms you can simulate that live to people where you can mix the audio where you can kind of put your best foot forward it's just like as as romantic as it would be to be able to just jam with all of our friends from all over the world like for whatever reason 2020 and elon musk have just let us down and that's just where we are so the internet is fast but somehow it still sucks when it comes to trying to make music so that's just what we have to deal with um, but if you are like not a folk artist and you are, you know, somebody else, I just want to say like if you're trying to like plug an electric guitar or something, 29 bucks, literally you can get a Behringer like Euphoria one channel. You can like basically every channel you add with Behringer, expect to pay like 10 more dollars. But you can get things like this, like the shotgun microphone I was saying. This is a Deity um, V Mic Pro D3. It's like 100 bucks. There's like little things. This is 20 bucks. And if I'm going to do a, a panel or something, I can plug this directly a lot of times into my iPhone or into my MacBook and it'll just pick it up. Some of these things are super helpful. We have to stop thinking like we can't do this. We're not smart. We're not tech savvy. Almost everything that I mentioned and everything that I sent to Vocal Alliance is literally plug and play. So if you can plug it in, it knows what to do. And it has saved you all the hassle by just being a piece of smart tech. So don't make the excuse that you can't do it. Like, I think your fans deserve the best you can give them, even if we're, we're like a lot of us as artists, we're kind of in mentally weird places right now. This this sucks and we're trying to figure out how to make a living. Um, but we have the opportunity right now to level up when the playing field, literally Beyonce is doing the same thing. She's, she's sitting at her house going, how do I get stuff to people? We're all on the same playing field. So if you want to make like a hundred, two hundred dollar investment, like maybe sell some of your video games and put it into your music career, I think you have an opportunity to reach a lot more people than you think and do it at a lot higher level than you've ever done it before. And that can carry forward and that can allow you to do this long term and build a lot more trust and comfortability in your home with all these people that are watching you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Corey, for sharing. I just want to take uh, Corey for you know 30 seconds here. We've been dropping the word OBS. Everybody in this call has been saying it. We have yet to define what it is. So for our audience that doesn't know, what is OBS? It's, it's, it's a pl platform called the Open Broadcast Software. It's it's literally like having your own like little video studio. I haven't used it a ton. I'm kind of like, I got into this uh, like late last year, kind of live streaming and broadcasting and stuff. So I'm, I'm leveling up and I think some of these people have probably used OBS a lot longer, but um, it's, just a, it's just a really good way to have basically a free piece of like television broadcast, like at your fingertips where you can, you can add in overlays, you can change things like you can, you can pretty much do anything you want with like, like I have this hardware switcher right here, but it basically can act like that in a lot of different ways and even do better. And uh, it's free. And if it's free, it's like, why, why not use it? Like it, it you yeah. know, I, a lot of people have said like, oh, OBS gives me tons of trouble, but it's like literally just like YouTube every problem you have and you can yep. figure it out in two minutes. It's exactly. a great piece. It's amazing. It's a free piece of software. If you haven't downloaded it, download it and have a fun weekend playing with it <laughs> and your new virtual video switcher in your computer. If you're wondering how people are doing those overlays, that's how they're doing it. Um, mm -hmm. All right, we're going to throw to Lee for tips on leveling up. Go ahead, Lee, take it away. All right. Well, not to, to reiterate Stephen's point too much and, and uh, Corey's point as well. If you're happy with what you have, if it looks good, if it sounds good, and I say this, and it's probably similar for all of us, as somebody who's never seen a piece of gear he didn't want to go out and buy. Um, but uh, if you're happy with it and it sounds good, don't worry about going out and spending more money. If it's something that you do want to do more often and you want to spend a little bit of money, there are a few, I think Corey touched on some of these, you know, three sort of major areas, perhaps four that you can really get into. One is sound. Um, as Samantha said, getting an audio interface, a Focusrite or a Behringer, something you can plug in that's got some separate mic pre's, 
and also taking the time to mic everything separately, have your guitar mic separately, have your vocals mic separately. That's gonna make it sound that much better because you've got more control over it. You're not blasting a wall of sound into your laptop's microphone and hope that it all works out. Um, lights as well, as Corey said, there's a lot of inexpensive lights. Um, nowadays, because you know webcasting is such a thing, you can get really inexpensive LED lights. Even a single one on your face will help quite a bit. Uh, and again, we're talking 50 bucks, 100 bucks. It's, it's amazing how inexpensive this stuff is these days uh, and the quality that you can get with that. Um, video as well, if you're concerned about video, if 500 is a little more than you want to spend, um, Logitech has got some great web cameras that are better than the MacBook Pro camera. And again, they're 100 bucks, 200 bucks, and they come with some software you can download that actually allows you to do some video capture and some of the broadcast software. So Logitech has got a built-in one that you can do some overlays and things like that and some switching. Uh, and the final thing is, is something like an OBS. Um, I use one called Wirecast, which is a paid broadcast production software. Um, there are some other ones out there that are free as well. Um, but what it allows you to do is have multiple cameras and multiple shots. We've got one artist that's doing an at-home series and he has his digital SLR as one camera and the iPhone as another. Uh, and his wife is sitting there and switching between the two cameras. So they've got kind of a multi-camera effect. Um, but things like with, with the open broadcast software and Wirecast, you can do a pre-show video, uh, have that roll before you're set. You can put overlays on there. You can put a graphic up for your merchandise. All that stuff is going to make you seem just that much more professional, help communicate with the fans. Uh, but again, don't ever lose sight that this is about the show you put on. All the bells and whistles are nice. I, I liken it to asking, you know, what kind of guitar do I need to write a song? It, it doesn't matter. It's not going to sound, uh, the song's not going to be any better if you write it on a Martin than if you write it on an inexpensive, you know, Korean guitar. So focus on the show that you're putting out there um, and, and make sure it looks and sounds good. Amazing. Thank you so much, Lee. Again, all of this stuff is linked. The panelists have sent, been so kind to send us links in advance. It's in the handout section. All right, guys, we have 15 minutes left. So we're going to throw into the Q&A section. Sorry about not getting Lee's bio up there. I will get, get uh, that sorry, up there I've for a while. A yeah. <laughs> and um, so I'm going to go ahead. I, we've been getting so many questions here. Uh, we're going to throw to the live Q&A. Um, Let's see. Oh man, there's so many good ones here. Okay, so we've got a, a couple venues, right, who are asking us questions. We've got somebody here who uh, has a 400 seat concert hall, another one with a 120 seat cultural center. They're trying to figure out what can they do as a venue with live streaming? Um, what platform for audience who, who has purchased tickets work best? Uh, what kind of, can they use existing sound equipment? What would they use and how many cameras uh, right now? I mean, this is a, an enormous question, but if you all were consulting with a venue, uh, I'm just gonna throw this out and let one person respond back. What would advice would you give them for getting started as a venue who's wanting to do some live streaming right now? Yeah, Steven. I'll take a swing at that, uh, you know, cause I, I, I've been a part of a lot of venues for the last 20 years. I um, for starters, I would keep it really simple because, uh, you know, we're here, most of us real conscientious of trying to flatten the curve and, and really respect the social distance thing. So it's a little tricky when you see bands doing stuff. It's I, 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 I no judgment, but I, I don't know. You know, I don't know how that looks. So I think the first thing you do if you're a venue is you've got to make you've got to simplify the situation. It's not going to be we're not going to do everything. Okay. So you're looking at, are there, I mean, when this is folk alliance, so there's a lot of solo performers or duo performers who could safely maybe do something, you know, and I think one of the things you look at doing is can we, can we at a venue set up a situation where, and I'm riffing here off the top of my head, but where we, where you set up a little stream there and you, and you look around to your geography and say, is, are there, solo duo small acts that can sort of sit apart and we charge a virtual ticket for this and you come to x venue and you start by tapping your regional heroes and doing some small shows and seeing how that goes and if you sell you know 30 tickets at 15 dollars or something that's a start and you can kind of build it out you know and i, I mean that might be one thing i would strongly consider where you go all right you're they're going to bring their own mics we're going to have a duo play here on stage we're going to stream a show from the venue to people in your you know they're reaching out to their mailing list and they're bringing those people in 
and you do a ticketed virtual show. I mean, that's what we're doing on our tour, and I, I think venues could definitely do that. It's a matter of sort of which performers you can get there. You can't get the whole spectrum, but I would, I might start there. Yeah, go ahead, Sam. Did you want to jump in? Yeah, and just to answer the equipment part of it, um, all you need is a, a camera, a computer, and an internet connection. If you already have the audio, um, if you, I guess you'll need an audio interface. Uh, you can just plug your board. They can play through the system like they might normally, and then you can just run it into the audio interface. Everything will plug into the computer, and then you use OBS to stream it to wherever your heart desires. And it's really as easy as that. So. And it's a great, it's a great time to give that that local up and comer a, a shot, you know, because because what you, you where you say, hey, here's here's a thing, and they're gonna want their friends and family and and fans to stream, and so. You know that's that's a that's an interest really cool idea yeah awesome lee do you have anything yeah i, I had a yeah feeling. i was just gonna say we've we've done some some pretty big live concert streams over the years um and just for perspective even those are literally taking a soundboard audio mixing it with the venue cameras in this case an outdoor shed where they have multiple cameras we're just taking that camera feed mixing it with the audio from the board and pushing that out so so just as venues know the bar is not that high, even on some of the biggest productions. So simpler is better. Just get it out there to the world. I think too, like, and this is a completely separate idea, but I think I think venues also have like a good opportunity where they can just try stuff that they've never done because this is a situation that we've never been in ever. And we hopefully will never be in again, but the situation that we could they could actually ask or act as tastemakers and offer and say like, what's something we've never done with artists here before that rather than us saying like we normally do, hey, come watch music. We say, hey, we're gonna have such and such come in and they're gonna like, Gregory Allen Iskakoff's gonna teach us how to like milk a cow because he actually can milk a cow. And like, like I, I'm not, obviously that's a ridiculous idea. But the thing is, is like the venues have an opportunity to give something that like, that nobody else has if they want to, even if it's not something they do in person, but they do in a Zoom call, like they have the opportunity right now because literally everyone's live streaming shows like almost at nauseum. So what can we do to actually present ourselves as companies, as venues, as artists in a different light that allows people to go, you know what? I haven't seen that artist do that. I'm actually gonna click and I'm gonna go there. And because we're like diversifying who we are as a person, I think venues and artists have an opportunity to actually be more than they have been in the past and not only just sing songs at people, which I think is super, super valuable, but we all know that it's that time after like when we're at the merch table and people are actually getting to know us, that's also extremely valuable. So how do we present that in a way that, that the, the, the venues and the artists can actually work together? Awesome, thank you all so much. Uh, we have a couple questions here about kind of stream integration. So Instagram Live, Twitch, YouTube, getting those to a website, getting them into a Zoom meeting, all of these kind of integrations back and forth. And I know that when it comes to specific software, it's always great to just go to that website, look at the how-to, Google their Google their Q&A. It's all available. But from you all, uh, I would like to maybe just talk a little bit about this integration, simulcasting. Like, is it valuable? Should we even be doing this? Why would we do this? Uh, we've got about 10 minutes left, and I want to hit this and maybe one more question. So throwing it out, Graham. Uh, I think simulcasting is very valuable because, uh, well, let's go back to the Folk Music Awards idea. So you, you had it on two different platforms. Facebook is really good, or we found that Facebook was really good for having people interact with each other. So so we have a board of directors who normally would go to a physical location, and we had to cancel this year, obviously, for physical distancing reasons. So So we had our people actually interacting with the people who were viewing the video. Um, we also had it on YouTube, and essentially that that means that means that people could interact with it in a different way. YouTube offered higher quality, and and it's just there are so many different way, different reasons to 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 get into two different platforms aside from just just having the same actual show in two different places, more eyeballs, and uh, more people to see it. Yeah, Lee. Uh, I was going to say as well that we, we've also found there are a lot of advantages to having it simulcast. And the nice thing is there are a lot of pieces of software and hardware out there that will actually do the integrations for you. Uh, I use one called Restream, which will allow me to push to multiple platforms at the same time. And their integration, literally you create all of the different integrations in the software, and then it will automatically push them all out at the same time. 
I know Teradek has got some streaming hardware that'll do the same thing. Uh, it's a device that you have that'll push the content out to the internet. And then from Teradek, it'll go out to three or four different places. Uh, and as far as getting it on your site, you know, Graham had alluded to this. One of the great things about YouTube is you can run things as unlisted, meaning they don't show up or populate or the world doesn't know about them necessarily right away. And you can then take that and embed that almost anywhere. You can embed it in your WordPress site, in your, your Bandcamp site. Um, you can throw that on a sponsor page, a venue could put that on their page. So it's really flexible to take those embeds and put them anywhere you need them. That's amazing. Thank you. I, I love that you brought up the partnership between artist and venue. Right now, that is a promotional match made in heaven. Uh, you know, artists are live streaming at home, but they would have been playing at a venue. Get that venue to help cross promote, just like you said, share it. Uh, Graham, you want to chime in? Just, just really quickly, um, I am, I'm actually streaming uh, a live Celtic music session, like jam session, uh, tomorrow night. And I did it last week, um, and it's going to be, uh, it, it's out of Newfoundland. I'm not just saying this is a promo. It's really neat because uh, it's run by the Newfoundland Labrador Folk Art Society, which run the folk festival there, which, you know, it's uh, they, they run a, a Wednesday evening event, and they've got sponsors, the the local pub, the, the ship pub, which uh, lots of musicians who've been to Newfoundland have played. Uh, there's a, there's a local bakery that's also a sponsor, and they'll both be um, I'll, I'll be cross posting. It's a term where where you can live stream to your Facebook page, but then you can automatically go to various others. I'll be cross posting to there, and that's a really great way to get other people involved. You can in, involve more people in that discussion. Yeah, Stephen, did you have something you wanted to chime in on? No, I just loved your idea, so I like raised my hand in excitement. That's all. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Um, I just want to take a second to say I'm reading a lot of these questions. If you have questions about a specific software, so if your question is something like, you know, can OBS stream to multiple things at the same time? That's a great question to ask OBS and the people who produce that software. Google it. It's probably already out there. Um, there were a lot of questions about OBS and possible um, alternatives to that software. Some people find it too daunting because as Corey said, it's an entire TV studio in your computer. Um, Lee, I think you had some alternatives. Could we just throw some out real quick? Uh, somebody mentioned Be Live. Be Live is good. Wirecast is a paid uh, one. It's, it's also fairly deep though. Uh, Logitech has some stuff with their webcams. You can download from the Logitech site. That's a fairly basic sort of video production, allows overlays and multiple cameras. Um, and, and I would just add, that's also where don't be afraid to ask somebody who might be able to, to, to help you there. Um, you know, we've, we've done a lot of sessions with clients where we'll jump on a Google Meet uh, and share screen and walk them through. These are the five things you need to do. Um, it's sort of like me and Pro Tools. Uh, I can do three things, but three things really well and a whole bunch I have no idea what I'm doing. But uh, if you can learn the basics, you'll be all right. And, and don't be afraid to ask your friends at this time. Somebody probably knows how to do it. That's right. Ask a friend. That is great uh, advice. We've got four minutes left and the people really want to know what our setups are for this. Uh, we've got a couple questions. People saying, what are you all using? So I'm going to kick it off and we'll go down the line. I'm using a condenser microphone right here. Uh, that is specifically designed for vocal uh, with an enormous pop filter on it. So I can get right up on it and get that great radio sound without popping all my peas. Uh, a nice set of closed back over ear headphones. And I'm running everything through an audio interface made by Behringer called the XR18 directly into my MacBook Pro. You're seeing the MacBook Pro uh, webcam for me. Uh, I made my own light boxes because I couldn't find them available on the internet because they were sold out. Uh, let's kick to Corey and then we're just going to go down this list. Well, uh, Jared, I can give you some light boxes if you need some. Um, <laughs> so uh, mine's pretty normal. Like this is my normal setup. I will say like some of these people, um, GoToMeeting did not want to accept some of my audio features. So normally I'll run uh, audio wise, I'll run an SM7B into a cloud lifter because these things want to suck everything out of the world. But um, I'll usually run that as my main microphone. I'll run that into an Apollo Twin or like I said, like this little Behringer Euphoria. Um, right now I'm running a uh, Panasonic Lumix GH5 as my main camera with a 24 millimeter. Um, I'm also running an overhead cam. So if you are like a luthier or if you are somebody who like Sincerely, I, as a songwriter, I do these live streams. Want to do these live streams with people and do co-writes where I actually have this. I'm actually writing with them. I know it. Like it's the little things that allow us to be like, hey, we're humans, and this is fun, and I'm enjoying this. So right now, I'm running the, uh, a Panasonic Lumix GH5 
four and a GH5 into uh, this Blackmagic A10 Mini. Uh, that A10 Mini uh, basically auto-populates into OBS. It also auto-populates into Skype and Facebook and stuff like that. You have to know nothing. You can literally plug this in and you can go to Facebook and it will see it. In the same way, it works just like this in this meeting. It works for Zoom. So that's a pretty cool feature. They're really hard to find, but that's that's what I'm running. It's just a couple soft right. boxes and stuff like that. All right, real quick, real quick, Graham. Okay, uh, so my display is an Apple Cinema display. Camera's built in. Uh, I have two microphones here. They're really great microphones, uh, but they don't work because uh, the audio interface for GoToMeeting didn't work. So I'm using <laughs> the, the microphone on the display. So if I sound terrible, I'm just gonna say maybe that. Um, I'm a hard, obviously on a hardwired connection and uh, I have an Ikea three light lamp stand. Amazing, Steven. Yeah, I, I use, for our streams, I just use an SM58 and I sing through this little Bose S1 two channel little box. And then we mic that and put it through a two channel mixer that even I can understand. And it shouldn't work, but it really has sounded quite nice. There you go. Wonderful. Uh, Lee. Oh, there we go. I'm using my MacBook Pro Logitech webcam. I've got a couple of light boxes up here uh, and using a Yeti Blue just for this. Um, if I'm doing music, uh, I've got a Neumann TLM 103 that I'll use through a Scarlett interface um, just to get a little bit better sound on that stuff. Wonderful. Thank you. And Sam? Uh, I use OBS mostly. I'll actually, uh, you're able to use your phone as a camera input into OBS. So I use my my phone that way. And then I have my MXL V67G is their green and gold microphone. Uh, keep that really close to me. And then I've got my Scarlett 6i6 and all that's kind of going into my MacBook Pro and I'm able to control everything really nicely. So Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us for this webinar presented by APAC, the Alliance for Performing Arts Conferences. We are down to the wire in a few seconds. I want to send, extend a huge thank you to Lee Totten, Corey Martin, Samantha Potter, Graham Lindsay, and Stephen Kellogg for joining us today. You'll all receive an automated email within a few days with links to all of the resources, a recording of the episode. It will be archived on Folk Alliance International's YouTube page for the future. As soon as we click stop on this, there will be a brief webinar survey. Please do take that. Everyone stay safe, stay connected, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.